Welcome to Gotta Run. This is Will Sanchez. Thank you for tuning in. My special guest today is Peter Chacha. He is the president of events for New York Roadrunners and is the current race director for the New York City Marathon. As some of you have know, Peter's retiring to the top of his game at the end of this year's marathon. I met Peter halfway through his career at Roadrunners in 2009. I am a member of Community Board 8, and we had a forum on parks. New York Roadrunners has always, always been responsive to community needs, and Peter was there to talk to us about New York Roadrunners. I'm honored to have Peter as a guest. Welcome. Hi, welcome, Will. Thank you. Thanks it's for having me. It's a pleasure. I don't know if you remember that day back in 2009. It was a forum on, the, uh, on parks throughout the city. My community board took the lead, and we invited committees, park committees from all over yeah. the city to come in and talk about what's going on in our parks back in 2009, particularly the commercialization of parks which is probably still an issue today. Yeah, it still is. But you know, over the years, we've worked with many commissioners and a, um, you know how the administrations have changed. But the New York Road Owners, we don't own our venue, right? We, we don't have a stadium. So what we produce is out on the roads or in the parks. And the parks are really our home base, Central Park being the main park that we use for mm -hmm. our events. But we're in a lot more today than we were back in back in uh, 2009. But it's always been our relationship that makes things work with keeping that relationship at a high level with with all the park officials and with all the ag city agencies. And it's very important. It's a it's it's a public space. We want to respect the space, and we worked very very hard over the years to make sure that that is carried through on all the events that we do. We're, we we want to leave the park in better shape than when we, we get into the park. So a lot of that is what we actually work on every week because we have events every week. That's right. You know, That's right. We're only going to touch the surface today. You've done so much. In terms of community, you've also done things, free running events and other things to help the community, particularly our youth. Can you talk about that? Yeah, we're a community-based running organization here. We just have to happen to be global, um, and that's because of, of course, the marathon and what we produce for the marathon. And some of the other big events now, you know, over the years, we were able to take it uh, globally um, through broadcast and the like. But we're, we're really at heart a community-based organization, and we want to not come into somebody's neighborhood with a race and leave. Like, mm -hmm. it's not in and out. Mm -hmm. And that you could see that throughout everything that we do across the five boroughs. We have we have events in in every borough. Upcoming uh, pretty soon is the Fifth Avenue Mile, New Balance Fifth Avenue Mile this, this weekend. weekend, right? And um, after that, the big event is New Balance Bronx Ten Mile up in the Bronx. So, but what we do all year long, we're engaged in that in those boroughs. We're engaged in those communities, whether it's through our free programming in the schools whether it's through our free programming in our senior centers or with our kids that are now in our youth wheelchair programs. And it's something that we do on a weekly basis. We're not there and gone. We're there and we stay. And, and the event is just in the, in the boroughs. It's just a, a culmination of what, you know, a celebration of what we do. Absolutely. Sounds like a 24-7 yeah, job. Yeah, it is. It is. Actually. Let's talk a little bit more about the youth. Particularly, I saw a photo of you standing next to the young people in their wheelchairs. Yeah. I think it was last year. It's Fifth yeah. Avenue. Yes. So they're going to be there. I think, yes. Yeah. This, this, I think it's on Sunday. On Sunday, yeah. We piloted this three years ago, I think, working with Victor Khaleesi out of the Mayor's Office of Disabilities. And this is something that we had many conversations with Victor, a great advocate for this and a real sweet guy. We have a fantastic professional wheelchair division, right? Right. We right. see that in our pro races. And when you see how hard these individuals work to get to where they are, it's, it's amazing and inspiring. And, and what I found over the course of talking to those athletes and over the years it's, it's so important at an early age for them to have something being disabled. And most of, most of those professional athletes were disabled from birth. Yeah. Uh, to have something that's going to give them self-confidence and give them the ability to be in a room with other able-bodied kids of their own age mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and relate to them. And also being able to 
talk with their parents. What really struck me is the, the kids today that we're working with, before we started working with them, they were not really fit. They were not anaerobically or aerobically fit mm -hmm. because their parents were actually pushing them in wheelchairs. So we had to talk to two. We had to talk to the child and we had to talk to the parent and educate the parent. Right. Like we need, the, let, the kid, let the kids develop those muscle mm -hmm. skills. The program is really starting to grow now. We're putting a lot of resources behind it. And to see the same kids come back from the first year, you could see a remarkable change in their physical structure, their upper body structure, and even their personalities. I think it's one of the greatest things that we've done. It must be very, very rewarding it's very personally rewarding. to see very, that. Yes, it is very, and then we have a great team that works on but it. And this is in addition to Achilles International. This yes, is, it, this is, is, it is, it is. And we, talk, we, we, love, we love Dick, and you know, we talked to Dick Tron, the head of Achilles, and they have their own kids program where we always work with them and see how we can marry. This is just like our school program. Our school program with our youth uh, kids that are in rising New York wilderness, we're in, we're in uh, so many schools around the city, right? And we go in, we offer free running programs, which the schools, the schools bring in mm -hmm. and, and they allow the kids. Now what we want to do is do the same, mirror that with kids that are in wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. And some right. of the schools we're finding have uh, kids in wheelchairs but don't know what to do with it, we're there. We'll, we'll bring it to you, you know, right, and, right. and that's what we love about it. I don't think you guys get enough credit or exposure what to do with the, for the community because I wasn't aware of the kids program for yeah. wheelchairs. I knew yeah. about Rising Runners because we did a story about that, right. the high school program, right. which is great. But, but you're probably more famous now because of the marathon, because of races, because you're out there. You know, you greet the first runners that cross the finish line to the last runner that crosses the finish line. And it doesn't matter if it's a 5K or a marathon. You're yeah. there late at night. So how does that feel? That's a really long day for you, isn't it? I, I don't mind. It's what we do. And, and I have to tell you, you want, I want, and, and the organization wants, everybody to have, uh, have the greatest experience they ever had but when they come to any race. Because I do this at, at every race. It's not just the marathon. We have races every weekend. It doesn't matter the distance. And we don't even want to call them the last person, just the finisher. And that happens to be towards the back of the race. And to see the smile on their face, is, it's remarkable how much effort they put into what they're doing. And we want to celebrate with them. We want to acknowledge that. Hey, listen, Shalane Flanagan can run the marathon in 221. Some of these individuals are out there for 11 hours, right? Yep. And they're putting in a lot of work. They need to be celebrated as much as Shalane does. Funny thing is, we started this many, many years ago just to make sure that everybody that's out on the course is coming home safe. And we started building this from that. And, you know, it just caught on. For me, it caught on. It took fire. When you talk about the marathon being out late, it is a late night. But we want to make sure everybody's in and we're all safe. We have one of the best operations, I think, in the business that we've developed over the years. Um, that's part of it. That's part of making sure that we have our eyes on and hands on the folks that are still coming through. This being the last year is yeah. going to be really special oh, for me. Of course. You know? Of course. Yeah. And I love the fact that you have Meb or Shalane there giving out the medals. To yeah. The, uh, to so what happened with that is oh, after the pro race is done, we do our press conferences and the awards and all that with the pros. And then the pros go back to the hotel. They're back in the hotel by, you know, right, right. by lunchtime. In the evening, we have every year we have a little get together with the pros. You know, it's a little celebratory uh, dinner in one of the restaurants nearby the, uh, uh, the course, uh, the finish line. And I went, I went a few years ago and went in and thanked everybody uh, for, for being part of a great race, the, the greatest race in the world. And I got a call on my phone, which is what my guys do, and, and they called me to tell me that the last runner is coming in. So I excused myself. I said to the professional athletes, listen, I have to leave. I'm going to see the final finisher. They didn't know what that was. I left and I went and they asked, they were asking, you know, uh, uh, the rest of the staff that stayed there, what, what was that about? And I found out that a lot said they never heard of that. They thought that was really cool. So what I did was the next time I saw them, I invited them to come and join me. And they all really loved that idea. We had like a dozen of them out there. Now imagine getting your medal from, from Meb. Shalane oh, or Shalane. Meb. And David Frazier, last year, who is disabled Achilles. athlete, Achilles, he pushes himself backwards. backwards. Yes, yes. I love David. And he got his medal from Tatiana McFadden. So how do you not, how does that not? 
you know, not only is David so proud, but I know his guides. Yeah. Like Michael Oliva is one yes, of his guys. I know. I heard David from Michael Oliva because I had him as a guest. Yeah. I've got to run with Will. Yeah. So I'm very familiar with David Frazier and his incredible story. Yeah. That is a wonderful, wonderful story. And I love the title, Final Finisher. Yeah. You know, it sounds like a superhero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, we have a ball with him. But let's talk more about the marathon because the marathon is always in the news, usually very positive, but occasionally you hear about drug problems performance-enhanced drugs. But as far as I know, the New York City Marathon has never had such a problem. Yeah. So how do you relate to that success? Now, what was your secret to that? Well, there's credit to be given to the professional athlete group in our, in our uh, organization. Um, we have people that work on this year-round. Our recruitment is done year-round. And we go out and we, we take a look at what's going on at other races. We talk to people. We keep our ear to the ground. We work very closely with the IAAF. And now the IAAF has the Athletes Integrity Unit, which we work with very closely with. And, and, you know, of course, USADA. And we basically formed relationships and were able to talk to people out there and see what's happening and keep our eye on whose time is flipping up really high and take a look at you know, how, did, how did this person really perform over the years. So it's been, it's been a, lot, a lot of investigative work and a lot of due diligence, due diligence is the right phrase. So that's really what it's about. And yeah. I think um, some luck, but, uh, you know, but I will tell you that, um, and I made a statement um, uh, when I became the race director, you know, I was a technical director for many years. And we all watched this, and this was, you know, the, uh, New York, the New York, uh, you know, New York City Marathon was the highly tested. Uh, we we did ourselves highly test out of competition, uh, you know, blood test in competition, um, you know, at 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 our events. But um, what what we wanted to do is um, bring that to the next level, um, and we have a very active. Uh, running community in in the city here a very competitive running community we house hundreds of of clubs now that compete and they compete for they compete for money mm -hmm. and they compete for you know uh, you know I'm the I'm the best in the in the uh, right, right, you know, right. chest thumping it's, and it's a lot of fun but we we wanted to make sure because there were there were reports not in New York but on the outside of of even some of the locals that were running um, other other events, not ours, but you know what was happening in other events of, of uh, drug cheating going on. So I made it a point to our guys: we should extend what we're doing to um, our competitive runners in in the local competitive field, not just the professionals, but the mm -hmm. next level. We call them the local elites. Right. You know. Um, so we started a, a drug testing, but what's more more important, Will, was more important for me was the education. And the education um, even got down to the point of I wanted um, kids to understand what performance enhancing drugs could do to them. I would read stories about young, young athletes in high school, uh, especially on football, dying because they were taking steroids. And, you know, it, it was very disturbing to me. And I didn't know how deep the, the education piece of that went. Yeah, you yeah. only saw what you saw in the news. Yeah. So we figured, okay, let's take the opportunity to uh, bring it all together. We started a program called Run Clean. I went to all the athletes. I talked to all the athletes that come in every time they come, the professionals now, every time they come in after we launched this to help me support this. And all of them have, uh, have galvanized around this and, and are you know, spreading the gospel about this because it's important and, and those guys and and women when they come in here and race they're on the big especially in our our events here in new york they're on the biggest stage in the world so if you want to continue racing and benefit from that and and we'll welcome you back anytime you cannot have any sort of um profe you know uh peds or right, anything right. in anything come up they know that they know i won't deal with it they know i won't deal with any of the uh managers that are that have athletes right, that right. are using this so yeah. so we're creating trying to create that culture here yeah and and in conjunction with the abbott world marathon majors the other five yep, yep. majors um the testing that we're doing and the resources that we're putting in there we're hoping that it makes a dent i mean the athlete integrity unit certainly is 
is out there making some taking our suggestions and, and yeah, yeah. Trying to... yeah most athletes want a clean sport you know it's absolutely uh, you want a clean playing field it's a clean sport and you know and uh, you got to practice tough love and sometimes even more than that you yeah. know sometimes you get banned for life for doing yeah. for doing stuff yeah. and obviously the new york city marathon is going to continue to to be bigger and better even after you leave because you leave a strong legacy Thank you. well peter let's go back to the beginning if we may Tell us where you were born and something about you growing up years. No, I'm a Bronx guy. I, you know, I, I grew up, I was raised in the Bronx. Um, I went to school in the Bronx. I went to college in the Bronx. I went to uh, CUNY, Lehman College in the Bronx. It was lovely uh, where I grew up. Um, we had, um, you know, the family. It was a family neighborhood. Um, lots of kids, all the same age, all going to the same schools you know, in and around the neighborhood. So, and, and the big thing for us, um, you could have went two ways, you know, when I was growing up. You could have went down a bad road or you could have stayed, you know, um, w what we were doing um, was sports. And we, we played a lot of sports. The Police Athletic League was a big part of what, uh -huh. of, of where I grew up. And um, uh, they, they had their, you know, the baseball leagues in the summer and the basketball up in the public schools at night. And we were always into, into something with sports. And, and I, I loved it. And, and so did, so did the, all the guys and, and, and uh, kids in the neighborhood. We found places to go. I did not grow up f too far from Van Cortlandt. So Van Cortland was our little urban oasis. Yeah. We'd go up there and we'd run the back hills and the, yeah, and yeah. the uh, cross country. Well, that became later later on when, when we were in high school. But earlier on, we played all sorts of sports up there, and you know, even on the streets. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was all it's all about it was all about that for us. And the kids were great. We had great friendships, and 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 um, the parents were always involved. Strong parents, uh, working parents, working parents. My father was uh, born in Italy and came here as a young man, and, and he worked very, very hard. Uh, none of us, even, even all my friends, we, none of us had a lot of money. You uh -huh. know? So we, we didn't go to, we didn't have the privilege of going away to camp yeah. or any of that. So we had to do our thing, you know, in our neighborhoods. And Family. education was important. I went to good school. I went to a good high school, Mount St. Michael, up in, up in the Bronx. Oh, a good Catholic and, school. Yeah, it was a good school, but it was also a sports school. You know? I think it was, it was a tremendous, basketball. It was probably unbelievable the thing. When I went there as a freshman, I could not believe the size. And they were the size of the, uh, uh, of Bronx, the gymnasium. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, ridiculously huge. And it was, pro I think, the biggest gymnasium on the East Coast. I was in awe. With the, the first, first, first fiberglass backboards. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's the way the Catholic uh, CSA was. You yeah. know, the Catholic schools you know, competed against each other. Um, you know, we had our, we had our uh, basketball, Powell Memorial, uh, All Hollows, you know, all of those guys. Yeah, and, then, yeah. and then it went into track and then it went to baseball. So it was, you know, football was okay. all of that. So in, in high school, did you go into the track team? In high school, I, I did run track when, when I was in the uh, early stages. And then I moved to football. And then I got out of that, I, I, um, I got a job because uh, it was important uh, for, for me to contribute to the family, you know. I started working at an early age, um, but we played football. We played football all along. Uh, all touch along football? You don't look well, that big. Well, touch, touch football, but no, I played, I played uh, seriously, I played uh, <laughs> tackle football, and, and oh, we, played, uh, um, we played Sandlot uh, for many years up there into, into, my, uh, into my early college days. And, um, you know, yes, it was, it was fun, but boy, did I get I got you, okay. my socks knocked <laughs> off a few times. All right. Yeah. But in, uh, in college, what did you major in? I actually majored in musicology. I'm a, I'm a, a music person at heart. Um, I was um, I'm taught to play um, uh, various instruments. I learned how to read music when I was four years old. Ah. Um, and in all good Italian um, households, the accordion was always the instrument okay. that they would want uh, you to learn. So I was a, uh, a, actually a big accordion player uh, for a while. And that translated to keyboards and then eventually a guitar and you know all of that so oh, did, were I you in the band sounds like uh, a... yeah on and off but you know it wasn't uh, it wasn't something that i you know i pursued regularly because there weren't too many other kids in the neighborhood that were were as uh inclined to to do that and plus i was into sports into but, sports but i did you know there were the the uh 
studies, you know, because I did study for a long time, uh, you know, the other kids that were in the uh, school where I was studying. That's them. interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, music, any dancing? I mean, your dancing, name is Cha Cha. Dancing, yes. I'm dancing, sure they of kidded course. you about your name. Do you do the Cha Cha? Yeah, well, there's a little bit of everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm nimble. 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 All right, great. You know, they described the marathon as choreographed, as a party. Yeah. Do you think your your career, your study of music, translated into the performance of the well, marathon? Well, yeah. When I left when I left college, I started working in the music industry. So eventually into the production part of the music industry. So all of that you know, folded into what I'm doing now. Um, and yes, and it was one of the things that I thought um, the when I first started with New York Roadrunners, Mary Wittenberg was the uh, President. Was the president and the race director was one of the first things we started talking about was how to elevate the um, production around the marathon to make it more of a spectacle and and build it out to more of not just a one day race but a whole week and you know all of that came into play and you know I, I did a lot of production work uh, before I got to New York Road Owners and you know I brought a lot of that expertise in and what year know, was that that you started was now 2001. 2000, well, 2000, uh, sort of around the end of 2000, but 2001, I actually, 2001 is the last time I actually ran the New York City Marathon. I, you actually, not, I, I looked that up because I was wondering, yeah, dude, I did a decent time, like a 321. Yeah, yeah, it was decent. I can't uh, run anymore, you know, because I'm working, I'm overseeing it, and I'm really busy on, uh, each, at, at each race, but... Um, you know, I've I've run uh, lots of uh, in between. Maybe uh, stopped probably running New York Road on the races around 2004. Right uh -huh, now. Uh -huh. um, but the marathon was, uh, you know, back back. That was the first, and uh, you know, that was not the first one I I did, but it was actually the last one. The last one. Yeah, New York City. Well, that's a good one to wrap up your marathon career. Yeah. It took two guys to replace. Big joke back in yeah, 2015. Two guys to took two guys to replace Mary Wittenberg yeah. because your co-president right, right. was Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, which, yeah, it's uh, great. It's great. And it's great. and of course, it turned out extremely well for the yeah. last four years. Yeah. So I had Michael here. Yeah, great. He loves tea for kids. He just loves everything about what he does. And yeah. obviously, you out there, you greet the runners. Good morning, runners. <laughs> yeah. And then your catchphrase, something about the roadway being clear. Yeah, of course, clearance on the roadway. You always need clearance on the roadway. All right. What do you consider your most lasting legacy for the New York World Front? Is it the marathon? Is it, you know, what is it for you? I've, I've given this a lot of thought, and it is really the experience that, that we deliver to the entire city. It's, it's, it doesn't, you, you could put it on the marathon, but we do so much more than just the marathon. And, and, and that's, what's, that's what's so great about New York Roadrunners. I mean, it is an organization that is, it's ingrained here. I mean, you know, we, the, the, the marathon, everybody knows the marathon. Um, does everybody know our uh, open runs? No, but this is what we're doing. We're That's in right. parks. We want to get people moving. If there's anything that I, I, I could leave behind, it's just this, my spirit and, and my uh, tenacity to get things done and to move things downfield. And, uh -huh. and we've been lucky in that regard, you know, because, uh, you know, working with the city, as I said at the outset, we, we don't own our venue. That's right. That's right. And um, the relationships that we have, I built many, many relationships from the police that are on the ground right up to the commissioner, the police commissioner's office. And seeing the, the whole city come together, that's what the marathon is. You know, marathon is where the world comes to run, and I love welcoming people mm -hmm. here. So, so it's, that's, you know, really okay. what... Okay. Then, what's the best advice you think anybody has given you that really played dividends for you as a, as a person? I always say, um, and I say, t tell this to my group, is to be fearless. You know in, inside and in, in your heart, and you have to listen to people around you. It's not to be be careless and fearless. You have to be... Listen, weigh everything out, but but you can take those chances to build something special, and and when you have the support around you, it's great. And working with the New York Roadrunners team and the team that I have now, being able to pass the baton off on uh, on marathon evening to Jim Heim, who's been with me for 11 years. Mm -hmm. He's the technical director now. I, all along, we've been working together and moving and moving things along. He's a wonderful man, and um, 
being able to, you know, the spirit uh, of what we're doing to be able to keep continue to delivering that, it's going to be fantastic to see. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then finally, what's your first step after <laughs> November Sunday? People keep asking me, I, first, I want to experience re what retirement really is because everybody's saying, well, you're going to, you know, it's two weeks and everybody knows, uh, you know, my, my personality and, you know, I'm pretty much nonstop. But, you know, actually, it's been 18 years and um, this job, I, lo I love what I do. I love what we do here in the city and, and um, the kind of effort that's put into it, um, the, way, the way we put in the effort and the way I like to see things done the way I approach it, is, is it's all out. And you really need to, to be that way to put on the kind of events that we put on and to, to be able to deliver what we deliver. At least that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's my makeup. Um, so with that said, you know, a lot of things got put on hold and a lot of uh, adventures got put on the side. And now it's time for me to get back to that. I, I, you know, I have some family I want to catch up with. There's, you know, older family members. Back um, in Italy, perhaps? I ha exactly. I have family in Italy um, and I want to do some traveling. I put a lot of that on hold. Uh, spend some time with my son, and there's 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 a lot of that going on. So I'm off to, to new adventures, uh, beginning in in the new year, and you know I'll be out there keeping a keeping an eye on things from afar, but not not interfering, just watching, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and it'll be great. It's excellent. Well, on that note, we wish you continued happiness, thank you, and success whatever new endeavors thank you, you go into. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so I much. I appreciate that so much. Yes. That's a pleasure. Yes.